Hello and welcome to RT Ministries. Uh, my name is Dwayne and uh, this week's sermon is going to be on Hebrews 10, 26 to 31. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Hebrews 10, 26 to 31. I thought I'd do a message this week on uh, rejecting Christ. Uh, I've, we've had a lot of comments and I've talked to, you know, over the years, I think people have heard the message of Christ so much in this country that uh, and, and other countries that they kind of dismiss, us, uh, dismiss it as a common thing. But according to Hebrews, you know, you have to be careful uh, what you do with Christ once you hear the message. And I entitled the message, The Danger of Rejecting Christ. Because there is danger when you hear the gospel, you understand it, and then you push it aside and go about your life. There's danger in that. Before I start, I'd like to go into a little bit about conviction. Um, conviction of sin is nobody out there has ever been saved without conviction of sin. And it's not a, you can't muster it up yourself. You can't convict yourself. It's got to come from the Holy Spirit. So everyone out there, if you're ever convicted of your sin, careful what you do with the message because the Holy Spirit's doing that. Without the Holy Spirit there, you won't be convicted of your sin and you won't turn to Christ. So again, conviction of sin is... Uh, it's a good thing. If you're still convicted, that's a good thing. If you're not convicted anymore in your sin, then you're in trouble. So let me go through the text. I'll read it through, then we'll go back and talk about it a little bit. Hebrews 10, 26. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we had received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sin is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejects the law of Moses dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think a man deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified him, and who has insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, It is mine to avenge, I will repay, and again the Lord will judge his people." 31, is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. All right, let's start back with uh, verse 26. It says here, if we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth. You know, when you're told the gospel and you understand the gospel, you understand Jesus died for your sins and you understand you're a sinner and the, the problem or the trouble you're in and the sacrifice that God has given you, and you fully understand, this is the key, if you fully understand it and you keep on sinning, it says right here, there's no sacrifice for sins left. If you understand the truth and you deliberately keep on sinning, you're rejecting the only thing that can save you. You know, there is, like I said before in my other videos, and I say again, there is no other way to heaven. You've got to go through Jesus Christ. You've got to repent of your sins and go through Him. But... If you reject the one way to get to heaven, again, you've got to be careful because the Holy Spirit might not come back. According to the Bible, the Holy Spirit has to come and convict you. So be careful if you understand the truth and what you do with it. There's too many people that understand it, but yet they go on their life, and it's a dangerous thing according to this. 27, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire will consume the enemies of God. If you reject your only hope into heaven, the only thing you've got to look forward to here, it says, is judgment and fire. And the, ju you know, the judgment of God is hell. And, and I know a lot of preachers don't preach about hell, but it's still there. There's only one way to heaven. If, if uh, you reject it and go on willfully sinning, the only thing you've got left to look forward to is the judgment of God. And it says here, God will judge his people. You know, God, God isn't that mushy God that everybody's got conjured up in their mind out there that, you know, sets aside everything you do in your life and they'll still usher you into heaven. It isn't like that. If you reject Christ, the only thing you've got to look forward to is hell, period. Verse 28, it says, Anyone who rejects the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Now, back in Deuteronomy, it had, uh, the Lord said, if people reject the covenant or the Ten Commandments, His law, 
and they worship other gods, and it goes into the moon god and all that other stuff that they uh, uh, did in that day and still do in this day. Uh, I believe Allah, the origins of Allah is a moon god too. So he was a false god then and he still is. But anyway, if, if, one, if people rejected God and they died on the two witnesses, witnessed it, and they would take him out of the city and stone him. 29, how much more severely do you think a man deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot? Now, how do you trample the Son of God underfoot? Well, you take, you take the, the precious Son of God, Jesus Christ, and you take... You know, if you think about it, everything he did, he died for everybody in this. Who Everybody who would turn to him, he died for. And if you take that message, and that, that holy message, and then you put it underfoot, and you just treat it as a, a common thing, how much more punishment do you think God's going to do to you if you do that? So again, be careful what you do with, with the gospel and with Jesus Christ. Because if you... Reject him, you're rejecting your only way, your only hope out of the wrath of God, which, by the way, is coming. And it's, I don't think it's too far away. One of these days, uh, it's all going to be over. The working is done and the night is here and everything's done. It said, who has treated an unholy thing, the blood of the covenant who sanctified him. Again, you're treating the blood of Jesus Christ as a common unholy thing. And then, worse off, you trample it. You either mock it or you reject it. Now, if you reject the one, the creator of the heavens and earth, you reject him, and then you take his son, who he, you know, the Bible in Psalms says God was pleased that God, for God to bruise his son, to have a sacrifice for sins, to save you. And if you take that message and throw it in the garbage and treat it as any other garbage out there, you're uh, in danger. And then it says, in him who has insulted the spirit of grace. Now this is where the spirit of grace, that's the Holy Spirit. This is where the dangerous part comes in. Because if you're convicted of your sin and you, you receive the message of Christ, the gospel, repent from your sins and turn to Christ. And then you push it aside, you're insulting the spirit of grace. Which, again, by the way, is the only way you can be convicted of your sin. Is because he's there. And if you insult him... There's many people coming out of, in the Old Testament. They had an exodus coming out of uh, Egypt. And there's hundreds and thousands of people, of God's people, that came through the wilderness. But most of them ended up dying because they insulted Christ and they insulted the Spirit. So careful what you do with the Spirit of God because if He doesn't come back, you won't be saved. Verse 30. For we know Him who said, It is mine to avenge, I will repay and again, the Lord said he would judge his people. You know, the Bible says God put all judgment in the hands of Christ. So if you reject Christ and trample him underfoot, you're going to meet him as judge when you die. He's going to be the judge of the universe. It's all judgments in his hands. So how would you like to die and meet the Lord, stand in front of the Lord, the one you rejected and that you trampled on, mocked, or just treat it as a common thing and, and went on about your life. How would you like to stand in front of him with, with your sins intact? The same one who's going to judge you. The Lord will judge his people. You know, there is a day, the Bible says in Hebrews that there's a day set aside God's going to judge everybody. Everybody. Everybody in this world that's ever lived from Adam on is going to be judged. And Jesus Christ is going to judge them. And again, that's an appointment you're going to meet. We're all going to meet it. The ones who are saved will be at the judgment seat of Christ. And it's not a condemnation judgment, it's a reward. But everybody else's will be at the white throne judgment. Which, if, if you're at the white throne judgment, you are in deep trouble. Then it ends by 31. It's a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Now why would it be a, a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God? Well, again, if you rejected Christ, your only hope of salvation, it's going to be a dreadful thing for you because you're going to fall into the hands of a living God that you, you know, on this earth, you know, you can go to a, 
You can go to court, you can get a slick lawyer, you can, you can get out of a lot of stuff in this world, but if you fall into the hands of the living God without, with your sins intact, you're at His mercy. He can't be swayed by anybody. You can't talk your way out of it. And nobody in this universe can tell God what to do. And that's why it's a dreadful thing, because punishment's coming then. There's no way out of it. Again, you'll be thrown into the lake of fire with eternal punishment. You know, the, in Revelation, it speaks of, it pictures uh, wine. In the old days, they had a big wine vat where they filled the grapes, and people went in and were stomping it with their feet, and the juice would come out. God pictures that same thing as the wrath of God. And the blood, only he pictures it in Revelation as the blood coming out. You know, the, the eternal wrath of God should be understood. And, you know, if somebody, if this earth, somebody on this earth pours wrath out, you like a, like a court system or a, a judge can pour wrath on you, they can throw you in jail, they can even execute you. But God's wrath is an eternal outpouring of his wrath. It doesn't stop. It's a continual outpouring for eternity. That's how much God hates sin. So what can we say about Christ? Jesus Christ is the most important figure in this world. What you do with him, what you do with him matters because he's the only way to heaven. If you reject your only hope, the Bible says there's no longer sacrifice left for you. There's no hope but judgment. Judgment's the only thing that's coming for you. And you're in danger if you reject Christ. Anytime you reject Christ and the message of Jesus Christ, repent, turn from your sins, you are in danger of hell. You know, there's, you don't know when you're, how long you're going to live. You don't know. We have such few years on this earth that you know, compared to eternity, it's such few years. So, again, this is a warning from the Bible to be careful what you do with Christ. If you reject Him, you've rejected your only sacrifice to get you into heaven. And, there's a, again, the only thing you have left is a fearful expectation, a judgment. So, again, the gospel is, Jesus, turn to Jesus Christ and repent of your sins. Trust in Him and what He did on the cross. And that's it. But most people won't repent of their sins. Most people love darkness rather than light, according to the Bible. So, again, turn from your sins before it's too late. Thanks, bye.